Let us open our Bibles then to uh, the book of John. We are returning to uh, John's Gospel uh, and we'll be, we'll be here for a little while, I think. Um, so we're starting with John 11. This is we're picking up where we left off. And uh, we're reading from verse 1 to 44, although spending our time this morning, particularly in verses 1 to 16. So this is found on page uh, 1093 of your Pew Bibles. It's John 11, and I'm reading from verse 1, and I'm going through to verse 44. This is what it says. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. It was Mary who anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was ill. So the sisters sent to him, saying, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, This illness does not lead to death. It is for the glory of God, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, Let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now seeking to stone you, and are you going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble, because he sees the light of this world. But if anyone walks in the night, he stumbles, because the light is not in him. After saying these things, he said to them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I go to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will recover. Now Jesus had spoken of his death, but they thought that he meant he was taking rest in sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus has died. And for your sake, I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. So Thomas called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us go also, that we may die with him. Now when Jesus came, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles off. And many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them concerning their brother. So when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him. But Mary remained seated in the house. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know whatever you ask from God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet he shall, shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is coming into the world. When she had said this, she went and called her sister Mary, saying in private, the teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she rose quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come into the village, but was still in the place where Martha had met him. When the Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary rise quickly and go out, they followed her, supposing that she was going to the tomb to weep there. Now when Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in his spirit and greatly troubled. And he said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man also have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, deeply moved again, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone lay against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. 
Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, by this time there will be an odour, for he has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this on account of the people standing around, that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said these things, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The man who had died came out, his hands and feet bound with linen strips and his face wrapped with a cloth. Jesus said to them, said to them unbind him and let him go. I'll keep that open before you as we come to our God in prayer once more. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we ask that your word would enter our hearts and minds this day, that the teaching of it would be clear to us, that we might be strengthened in our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, that we may see him in all his glory and give you praise and honour and glory because of what you have done for us in Jesus. We ask it in his name. Amen. Uh, In John 10, uh, just before we, we come to this episode of the raising of Lazarus from the dead, Uh, We were in Jerusalem during the Feast of Dedication. And towards the end of this time there, Jesus was confronted by the Jews. And one of the things that they they were really angry at Jesus, because Jesus had said to them that he was one with the Father. He made it very clear that he was the Christ, that he was the Son of God. But more than that, he was claiming to be God. And the Jews at that moment picked up stones, ready to stone him to death. But Jesus escaped them. And that's what we're told in verse 39 of John 10. So in Jerusalem, the Jews are really upset because Jesus made the claim that yes he is the Christ, yes he is the Son of God, but he is also God himself. They understood it and it's certainly a truth that we need to know as well. And so one of the things Jesus said to them as he was talking to them, he says, if I'm not doing the works of my father, then don't believe me. But if I do them, Even though you don't believe me, believe the works that you may understand that the Father is in me and I am in the Father. And then we come to John 11 and this wonderful episode where the works of the Father are clearly on display. For who else can raise people from the dead but God himself? So how do these events unfold? What do they teach us about Jesus and what he came to do? I think there are two verses in John 11 that really help us and that are key verses throughout John 11. The main one is found in verse 25 and it should be somewhat familiar to us uh, if we've spent much time in churches uh, and and especially a favourite to be read out during funerals. Um, In the Anglican church, it's read out as, as they come into the into the church, the, the, the pastor or, uh, comes in and, and cries out these verses, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. And that's, that's a key verse. That's going to cement what, everything that happens in, in this episode with Lazarus. And perhaps you have heard that many times. And we're going to look at that more uh, in depth Next, next week, so come back. Stay tuned, come back. We're going to come back to this uh, event in the life of Jesus. But there's another verse that I want us to focus on today, and that's found in verse 4, where Jesus says, This illness does not lead to death. What is the purpose of it? It is for the glory of God that the Son of God might be glorified through it. And I think that's another key verse, and one that's probably not one that is stuck in our minds uh, that we remember well. But it is what Jesus says is the stated purpose of this illness of Lazarus. It is so that God 
would, res- would be his glory would be seen and that the Son of God also would be glorified through it. So that's what we're focusing on. Uh, the thing that, that strikes me about this is that this is happening through very unpleasant circumstances. Now, we have all seen people who are gravely ill. Uh, I'm sure we have. We've watched people that we love deteriorate uh, shockingly before our eyes. And it's not pleasant to watch. It's not pleasant to see. And this is what is happening to Lazarus. Loved of Mary and Martha. Loved of Jesus. And he's gravely ill. This is, this is not just a, a fever or a cold. But he's gravely ill. And there is some understanding that Jesus has power to do something about this. And it's Mary who reaches out to Jesus and sends a message, letting Jesus know that this man that he loves, and it's mentioned so often that Jesus loves him, even from the words of Jesus, from the lips of Jesus himself, he says that he loves him, or we're told that he loves him. Lord, he whom you love is ill. Verse 5, Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. There's no question of his love for them. But he delays. It's very difficult. It's a very tragic. It's a very serious situation that Lazarus is in. And Mary and Martha reach out to Jesus knowing that he can do something about it. And sometimes, you know, we look at situations in life when things are going well and we can really say, oh, we can see God at work in this moment. We can see how he's bringing blessing to us. We can see how he's glorifying his name. But how often would we say in a circumstance like this, where someone is gravely ill, that this is going to bring glory to God? And yet this is what Jesus says will happen. Now, yes, Jesus is going to go and he's going to raise Lazarus from the dead and it's going to reveal the power that he has. It's going to reveal the power that is in him through God the Father. It's going to show us his glory. But is that not true for all of us? If our hope and our trust is in Jesus, we know that he has been resurrected himself from the dead. We know that we too will be resurrected. That we too will be with him in his glory. That we too will share in it. That there is no illness, there is no grave uh, tragedy that can come upon us. That will not ultimately lead to the revelation of God's glory in Jesus Christ. For certainly that is what is going to happen here. God's glory is going to be revealed in Jesus Christ through his resurrection power. And this is but a foretaste of what Jesus is going to do. This is pointing us forward beyond just Lazarus. It is pointing us forward to where the Son of God will be glorified which alone in itself will look like absolute destruction. It will look like tragedy. It will look like the end of a great man. But instead, it will lead to God's glory being seen. And the Son of God himself will be glorified. As we look at at Thomas' reaction to Jesus going to... Um, going back to Judea and also the disciples. The disciples in verse 8 say, Rabbi, the Jews were just now seeking to stone you. Are you kidding? You're going to go back there? Don't you know the danger? They're out to get you. They haven't cooled down. They haven't calmed down. You go back now and they're going to come at you again. And Thomas, Thomas, at the end of it, when Jesus is resolute to go, Thomas goes, you know what? Guys, if Jesus is going there, we're going to go and die with him. Because in a very real way, 
this situation, this journey to Bethany, which is just near Jerusalem, so two miles out of Jerusalem, is going to lead into Jesus' last days on earth. He's not going to come back from Judea again. This is the moment where he is going to go and face his own crucifixion. But listen to what Jesus says the night before he dies. In John 17, verse 1, he says, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, that your Son may glorify you. Glorify me in your presence with the glory I had before you, before the world existed. This is the prayer that Jesus prays before he goes to his death on the cross. The purpose of his death is so that God would be glorified and that Christ himself also would be glorified. So yes, in this circumstance with Lazarus, Jesus is saying, my glory will be seen here. And the glory of God the Father will be seen here because I know what's going to happen. Lazarus will rise. But this is but a foretaste of what my glory, where my glory will truly be seen. And where the Father's glory will truly be seen. Because that will come in the cross and in the resurrection. That's where Christ's glory will truly be seen. So we might look at our unpleasant situations. We might sit there and go, this is not good. This is not wonderful. We might even see a loved one going through horrible situations where they are gravely ill, even unto death. But we know because of the resurrection power of Jesus that that is not the end. That Jesus will be glorified even in that circumstance when our faith and our trust is in him because we will see and we will know the resurrection power of glory, uh, the resurrection glory of Jesus Christ in ourselves. When we too are raised from the dead and brought to life with him. So we do not need to despair. We do not need to be afraid. We can know with clarity and certainty that these situations will be, bring honour and glory to God through Christ. And they will show him in all his glory. And ultimately, at the end of time, when Jesus returns, all will see his glory and God will be glorified. So yes, difficulties and tragedies will impact our lives, but through it all, God will make his glory known and Christ will be honoured. But these events also unravel in accordance with God's timing. And I want you to see that here as well. There was a trend some time ago where you could buy bracelets if you went into a Kurong or a word as it was then, the word bookstore. And the bracelets had the initials WWJD written on them. Or you could get T-shirts with it, I think, as well. And it was, what would Jesus do? Well, I wonder uh, if anyone who picked up on these bracelets or T-shirts ever responded to a phone call uh, saying that their dearly loved friend had moments to live with. Okay, yeah, I'll be there in a few days. Because that's what Jesus did. And it was deliberate. But it's not the response you might have expected from Jesus. You might have expected John to tell us in verses 5 and 6. Now Jesus loved Martha and his sister Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was ill, he immediately said to his disciples, let us go up to Judea again. That's not what happened. Now what we're told is that Jesus loved Martha and his sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Because he loved them, this is what the author's telling us, he stayed two days longer. A Lazarus is gravely ill. Okay, give me a couple of days before I head off to see him. It suggested that Jesus was just a couple of days journey away and that might be true. We're not sure. It could have been much further away. There are other commentators who suggest that. But what we do know is that Jesus deliberately and out of his love for Mary, Martha and Lazarus, delayed coming to them. And this timing of his coming to this village in Bethany was deliberate. Because only by his delay could God's glory be seen 
through the work of Christ. And then when Jesus does go, well, they respond with a warning about the Jews who were plotting to kill him last time he was there. And Jesus says to, him, says to them, and this response sounds strange to our ears, verse 9, he says, Are there not twelve hours in a day? For anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble because he sees the light of this world. But if anyone walks in the night, he stumbles because the light is not in him. So this delay and this timing of Jesus going to Bethany is not just out of love for Mary and Martha. It's also out of love for his disciples. And Jesus is saying, as he, as he makes this statement to them about 12 hours in a day and, and you know, he who is in the light will, will not stumble, but in the night they stumble because the light's not there. He's saying there's still work to be done. This, this is the idea. 12 hours in a day is the Roman idea of saying you work while there's daylight. And Jesus is saying there's still daylight disciples there's still daylight while you're with me there is still daylight while i am still here he knows his time is coming to an end but it's not at an end yet while the the light is still shining while i'm still with you there's work to be done and you can guarantee that that work will be done it's not going to go unfinished the work will continue you can trust in that And we see certainly after Jesus died, the, the disciples uh, find themselves locked in a room together because they are fearful of the Jews. They know uh, that Jesus is no longer with them. They no longer have the light there with them. The time has not yet come for him to finish the work that God has given him. So this is the timing of God, God's hand at work once more. God is with them. It's okay to be with Jesus while he's there in their presence. So this work of Jesus and this timing of God is to show the glory of God and of Jesus himself. Uh, yes, in the delay. If Jesus had not delayed, there might have been a question mark over whether Lazarus was really dead in the first place. And the timing of it is good for the disciples because Jesus is showing them there's still work to be done. Well, I'm still here with you. We also need the encouragement to know that Jesus is with us. Yes, Jesus went to his death, but he rose again. And the promise to all believers is that when our hope and our trust is in Jesus, by his spirit we are united to him. He is with us. We need to know that. The work that he has for us is not complete. He is with us. And we too must walk in the light while the light is with us. We have work to do for the glory of God. And Jesus will make sure it gets done. And the timing of these things, the difficulties that we go through, and the timing of those difficulties uh, are also a part of that work that Jesus is doing through us, a part of that work whereby we have an opportunity to glorify Christ in them. It's not always going to be easy. Sometimes it will be really unpleasant. Sometimes we will face opposition. Sometimes we will find ourselves in despair. But the cure is found in knowing the glory of the resurrected Christ and that he is with us because we are united to him by faith in him. So the timing of this is to show God's glory and to show God's glory to his disciples that there is still work to be done. Finally, the revelation of the glory of God through the Son of God does not depend on the faith of God's people. God will make himself glorified. We may doubt. Even in difficult situations, we may doubt. But God will be glorified. And Christ will be revealed as the Son of God. His glory will be shown. Because God will work all things out according to his plan and purpose. And here Thomas is our case in point. 
It seems that he hasn't understood what Jesus said or intended when he said to them, if anyone uh, walks in the day, he does not stumble because he sees the light of the, of the world. All that Thomas sees is the menacing threat of the Jews and a lost cause. Lazarus is dead. Well, what are you going to do, Jesus? There's no point. All we're going to is, is, is Jews who hate you, who are ready to kill you. Oh, we love you, Lord. We might as well go with you. Let's us go with you to die as well. If that's your fate. He doesn't understand, even after Jesus explains that, Jesus, that, that Lazarus is asleep and I go to wake him up. He doesn't understand even then. All Thomas sees is a threatening, a lost cause and a menacing threat. He cannot see how God's glory will be seen or shown or revealed in any of this. Well, I want to ask, does that matter? Does it matter that Thomas doesn't understand, that he's doubts, that he, that he cannot grasp fully what Jesus is going to do? No, <laughs> it doesn't matter one bit. God's glory will still be revealed through his son. And that will serve to help drive away doubt. Have a look at what Jesus says when he tells them that Lazarus is dead. Verse 14, he says, Lazarus has died. And in verse 15, he says, For your sake, I am glad that I was not there so that you may believe. The purpose, one of the purposes of Jesus going, when he did, was to strengthen the faith of his disciples. And as this uh, event unfolds, we see also that it strengthens the faith of Mary and Martha as well. Though they have faith, it needs to be strengthened. As too do the disciples' faith. And it doesn't matter that they doubt because God is still going to make his glory shown and through making his glory shown in his son Jesus Christ, that doubt will be challenged. That doubt will be cleared away. Not indefinitely, because as we know, Thomas later again doubts when when he's told of Jesus' resurrection from the dead. But it does serve to strengthen faith. It is important to have faith and trust in Jesus. And, 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 and the disciples don't have zero faith, by the way. Uh, Thomas says, let's go with him that we may die with him. We're, we're committed to, to Christ. We trust in the work that he's doing. If it means that he has to die and we have to die with him, then so be it. He has some faith. But that faith needs strengthening. And it's going to be strengthened when he sees the glory of God in his resurrection power through Christ Jesus. Or so too it must be for us. When we have situations where we are facing doubt through difficulty, look again to the resurrection power of Jesus. Not seen here in his raising of Lazarus from the dead, but in his own resurrection from the dead. Because he rose never to die again. Lazarus rose from the dead, but Lazarus died again. Jesus did not. He has resurrection power. And in that resurrection power, we see his glory revealed. That is what will drive our doubts away. We need to remind ourselves, and this is why we need to be constantly in the gospel, in the word of God, and and reminding ourselves again and again of what Jesus accomplished on the cross. More importantly, what he accomplished through his resurrection. The declaration that sin is defeated, death is defeated, and life is on offer for all who trust in Christ. He rose. He lives now. He is resurrected at the Father's right hand at this moment. Seated in all his glory at the Father's right hand. This is what we put our trust in. This is what will drive our doubts away in times of difficulty. Because there's never a good time for these situations, these troubling 
difficult, despairing situations to arrive in our lives. But we can be certain that God is working through them to bring glory to himself through Jesus Christ. We may not always see how God's glory will be revealed in the trauma that we're facing. But the reality of a resurrected Jesus and his promised return means that we can be certain that these difficulties will result in the glorification of God through Jesus Christ. It may be that our faith is tried and tested as we go through difficulties and difficult situations, even to the point where we maybe begin to doubt God's glory and goodness. But as we look once more to the resurrected Christ, those doubts will fade into insignificance when we understand what he has accomplished and that it was for us. In all situations, God's glory through Christ will be seen and that will lead to a strengthening of our faith and that faith will see us glorified together with Christ when he returns. What a wonderful encouragement to us all. Let us pray. Lord our God, we thank you and praise you for your son Jesus, through whom we see your glory revealed. We thank you that in his resurrection power, you raised him from the grave, never to die again, guaranteeing the end of sin, the end of death, guaranteeing life forever in your kingdom. Oh Lord our God, when difficulties come upon us, let us look again to the work that you have done for us in Christ Jesus. The work that you accomplished through his death and resurrection. And may we then be strengthened in our faith. In our hope. And may we know that you are God. And may we see your glory and the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so may our difficulties and our trials and our doubts fade away as we see the work of your glory. And we do look forward, Father, to the time where the whole world will be in no doubt as to your glory in the Lord Jesus Christ when he returns. That we too will be with him in glory for all time. We ask it in Jesus.